Within the CTMU, many paradoxes are resolved and others are identified and at the same time resolved. One of the easiest to understand is the concept of syndifianesis. While some have balked at the neologism, the concept is really quite straightforward, almost too obvious. The term is a great example of something that was simply never named or defined before. It is, in fact, quite useful. Can you just tell us a little bit about how you came to coin the word, what it means, and how exactly it relates to the CTMU? Okay, well, syndifianesis obviously has a, the prefix S-Y-N or syn and diphionesis. And what it means is sameness in difference or difference in sameness, no matter how, how you want to say it. Basically, it's a coincidence of sameness and difference. And it is solved once again by this idea of self-duality or dual inclusion. All right, in other words, there are two senses of inclusion that have to be applied to it. Now, what it describes is basically one object that has multiple aspects or multiple properties or one property that describes multiple objects, both of which exist in profusion. There's no getting out of it. So syndifianesis is everywhere. You can't get out of it. And of course, some people think, well, that's a trivial idea. No, it is not a trivial idea. Basically, what you have is you've got two things that you're looking at. And the only reason that they cohere that you can see them both at once is because you are using a cognitive syntax that allows you to recognize them. This viewing things in terms of cognitive syntax is something that I pioneered, okay? That's, that's the CTMU, Cognitive Theoretic Model of the Universe, okay? Suddenly, cognitive syntax becomes very important. And once you realize the cognitive syntax is there, you realize that you can use it to cohere things that are different. And as a matter of fact, that Whenever you recognize two things that are different, they are the same in the fact that you can perceive them. All right? In other words, they both share a common property perceivable by Gina. Great. You understand? Yep. Okay, so they're not totally different, are they? There's yeah. a level of invariance there, which is perceptibility by Gina, that both of them possess, so they can't be totally different. Exactly. So it seems like virtually every relationship is That's exactly right, which is why it is called the universal relational structure of reality. 